Hey, it's Justin from Square Baboon Consulting here to walk you through today how to set up your UCX and TFTP server in order to update that firmware on your Nortel phones you're using. A couple quick things first. I've got Notepad++ installed and WinSCP installed. They're two tools that you'll need in order to get this working. First thing we're going to do, we're going to fire up Internet Explorer and we're going to go out to Avaya's website, support.avaya.com, to go ahead and grab the latest firmware. When we get to Avaya's support site, we go to Downloads and Documents, and the product I'm going to upgrade today is my 1120E IP desk phone. So I choose 1120E IP desk phone, choose that I want the Unistem 5.x software, and I'll see the latest release is Unistem 5.5. So when I drill down into the Unistem 5.5 directory, I can scroll down to find my 1120's proper file, which is 0624C8Q. Go ahead and click on that guy. And we're going to download it here from an FTP server, so it's going to take a little while for a second. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And I've got a file here on my desktop called 1120 Upgrade. So if I go on my desktop, 1120 Upgrade, we're going to save it in that file. So we'll go ahead and say Save. It already exists, but we'll replace it anyway. And once that file gets downloaded, uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and use WinSCP to send it up to the TFTP server of our UCX. So now we've got the file. Go ahead and close Internet Explorer. You can see here there's the file itself, about three megs in size. Go ahead and close that down. We'll fire up WinSCP. And you can see I've already got a, a WinSCP login created. Uh, but if you haven't ever created one before, we'll go ahead and create a new one. Uh, so my UCX is 192.168.1.25. And my username is admin. And my password. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to go ahead and save this and we'll save the password which is not recommended and we'll actually call this one UCX system. So now I've got my UCX system. I can go ahead and double click on that guy, it goes ahead and authenticates. And what I'm going to want to do on my UCX system is go up a couple directories so that I'm in the root directory. Um, and once I'm in the root directory, now what I can do is go to the TFTP boot directory. And from over here, I want to go to my desktop and my 1120 upgrade. So there's the bin file. I'm going to go ahead and just take this guy, drag it and drop him over here and say copy. You'll see I've already got a file out there, 1120e.cfg. We'll talk about that guy in a second because that's the guy that's going to force the upgrade. Now that I've got that bin file out there on my UCX system on the TFTP server, I can go ahead and close this down and we'll open up Notepad++. So what Notepad++ is going to allow me to do now is create an 1120e CFG file, which is then going to allow me to upgrade the system. So if I refresh my directory out on the TFTP server, I'll see that I've got the new 0624C8Q bin. And my old 1120e's used to have 0624C8L. So what I'm going to do is change the C8L to C8Q. Change the C8Q there. Uh, download mode auto, what that actually means is that my uh, Nortel phones, every time that they turn themselves on, are going to check to see this CFG file. And again, any 1120E is going to check 1120E CFG. If it's a Unistim, if it's a SIP, it's going to check 1120E SIP.CFG. Uh, and what it's going to do is check to make sure that it's got the latest file. Uh, if it's got the same firmware, it's going to go ahead and skip it. If it's got newer firmware, it's going to go ahead and skip it. Um, but if it's got older firmware, in this case, it's going to go ahead and upload it. So we'll go ahead and we'll save that. And again, what it's going to do is it's going to call this guy 1120E CFG, and it's going to go put it out on the root of the TFTP boot folder of the UCX server. So now that I've got that done, what I'm going to do is go ahead and transition over to the phone and show you the experience as it is on the phone. So here we are looking at the 1120E now, and it's just had the reboot signal sent to it, so you can see the two lights on the top, the blue one and the red one. And what it's going to do here is it's going to go through its reboot cycle, and as it reboots, it's going to go ahead and check my provisioning server, which is also the same server IP address as my UCX. So it's going to check in with 192.168.1.25 as it reboots itself, and we should see it actually try to update the firmware here in a minute. So we just saw the Avaya logo. It's going to go ahead and boot now, and it should tell me the latest firmware. There's the familiar Avaya tones that we're used to, and as it boots up, so we get Avaya down in the lower left corner, at which time now I can push the four function keys to get the menu, but I've got my system being provisioned by going out to the server. 
So we can see there it's got C8L, in which case now since we've got auto on the firmware and C8Q installed, it's going to go ahead and start the firmware. There it's going out to the provisioning server and it's reading system.prv. Attempting TFTP and you'll notice now, checking for updates and it's found 0624C8Q. So it's going to go ahead, read the entire C8Q file, unpackage it, and install the firmware on the system. Go ahead and reboot itself and go through the same cycle. However, next time when it boots up, it'll automatically have 0624C8Q and won't need to go through the upgrade cycle anymore, so it'll go ahead and skip and boot straight to the phone. So the firmware's gone ahead and installed itself, flashed the phone, and forced the phone into a reboot cycle. So again, we can see the two LED lights are on up at the top, the blue and the red LEDs, and the phone's going to go into its standard boot cycle uh, as we speak. So again, all I've done is put two simple files out on the TFTP server. I put one that's a CFG file that tells it what firmware to get and the firmware file itself. One's a text file, one's a binary file, so if you're going to upload both of those using uh, WinSCP, make sure that you're uploading the right files and the right versions. So again, there we go, we've got the magical tones. It shows Avaya down in the bottom left corner, and now it should be showing us that it's going to boot the new 0624C8Q file. And again, it's reading the system provision. System found attempting TFTP. You can see that it says firmware skipped because we've got it set to auto. Even if we had it forced, it's the same exact firmware, so it's going to go ahead and skip it. So we're connecting out to our server, and we should here in just a second have connectivity, and there we are. We're connected to our UCX, and we can go ahead and perform normal functions with the latest and greatest firmware now.